Right, so let's back on this fluke. This is for part three of the video. Um, I'm still trying to diagnose what's going on with this. I've got some of it working, but as you would have seen in the other videos, but I've still got a bit to go yet. Um, while I'm just looking at here, this is all the... Um, uh, how's it called? Uh, the main divider and stuff like that here. Um, sub mixer and such. So this goes out to the phase detector section here, which is then used to generate frequencies. There's a feedback in, well, feed in from the main VCO, and it goes back out, so to the VCO to control it effectively. Um, so it's like a feedback circuit. Now, what I was actually just doing, I was trying to go through this because something somewhere is wrong. I know that this frequency here is wrong, and it comes through here, passes back out, and generates those frequencies which I know are also wrong because this one's wrong. So I think it's actually further back than this, but I was going through here anyway. I thought, well, there's a little voltage regulator here. So I thought, let's check on that. Um, I measured over here, well actually the output on the, on the regulator I measured directly, and um, I was getting a low voltage, um, below 5 volts. Um, and you know, it's a 15 volt supply here, 120 ohm resistor, that regulator and that chip. Right, so there's very little actually going on here. And there's also another little resistor here. So I'm actually going to look at this and just um, show you through that. So I've already got one pro hooked up. So this is the that's the regulator right there, and that's the UIC it's running. There's little pull tab things in here. So there's that other resistor. So this is currently as it is. So you've got 15 volts coming in on this side here. 15 volts and on this side here I'm getting 6.6 which is a bit low um, because the dropout voltage of the regulator is probably about 1.8 volts or something um, so I measure on there which is the output of the regulator I'm getting 4.8 um, which is a little concerning and then on the output of that other resistor there Still getting 4.8. So it seems to be that there's a bit of a drop in here. Um, what I've got is so it's a 120 ohm resistor that's in there, don't I? So I'm just going to clip this on. So I'm holding, holding the camera instead of having it on the tripod, which is not the best thing to do, I suppose. But so for the purpose of this video, it'll do. I'm going to clip this on. So that's currently set to 5.6k, so it's just helping very slightly, alright? Um, so that's that input, so it's 6.66, output is now 4.9. Okay, so it's already come up a little bit just by putting it across it with a 5.6k. So it shows me that um, that regulator is actually not regulating, it's um, not doing very well at all. So let's go to 2.2k, that'll probably be enough. So again, 6.7 volts. I mean, that voltage increase is not really coming up very much. Um, and the output from the regulator is now closer to 5 volts. So it actually showed that, yes, there was a problem with that. Um, so let's just go 1K. Right? It's still 10 times more than the original resistor. So there you go, now you're getting 7 volts there. And 5 volts there. So yes. Um, I might actually have to look at modifying this or finding out why those values don't work. That regulator doesn't feel warm. Not really, it's got a little bit of heat there, but not much. So I'm just going to try and have a bit of a feel around here and find out why um, it's not working right. You know, you would have thought the, the default factory values would be fine. Um, I'm not feeling anything here really. I mean, that regulator's got a little bit of warmth in it. Hardly anything, it's split a little bit there, but it's only running one chip, so you would think it'd be okay. So I might just um, strap a resistor across that, because um, obviously I don't want to put too much voltage into the regulator, because otherwise it starts working harder and um, it puts out more heat. So I need to have just enough to get the regulation voltage. So that's currently the 1k. Um, 
should actually have a look at the spec and see what the, electric, the official dropout voltage is for this thing. Um, so I'll just put up to 820k, 820 ohm, sorry, 7.2 volts going in there. And that's a nice 5 volts coming out. So I'm wondering if maybe that IC was um, was not being driven properly with voltage, under voltage, um, which would have affected a few things, I'm sure. So I'm going to try that out and see what happens. Okay, so I'm just trying to diagnose the PRL unlock issue I have where that's floating around on the output, as you can see. And I've got it set to uh, 39.33. If I go down to 38 or so, 37, there you go, 37, that's what I get. If I go back up to 39 again, or even 38 does it, um, I get that instability. Now what I've just found, if I come over here with a bit of freeze spray, if I just put a little bit of freeze spray on this chip right here, it's better. If I go to 39 megahertz, is that 40? Okay. So I had two issues. There's one that is coming unlocked, and the other is that it jumps like 20 megahertz sometimes. So, but this seems to be what resolves that problem with the losing lock. So if I um, that says it's locked right now too. If I come with a heat gun. Just heat up a little bit like that. Unlocked again. And uncow. And if I spray that chip again, show that. Okay, so it's like that chip or um, possibly the poor connection just there somewhere is the issue. So I'm going to have to um, pull that chip out and have a look and see what I can see. So looking at this part, um, that is U18, which is this device here, U18A, U18B. And according to what I could find out, uh, where are we? I'll find it. Uh, it is a dual type Dean Master Slave flip flop. Mm -hmm. um, so this is the device, and that's the pinout. So um, I have uh, found some online. I've just purchased them, so at least I can get some new chips coming. Although a batch of five, so um, I'm fairly confident that chip is one of the faults. I bought a few of them to make sure that I've got spares in case I even need any more. You never know. And uh, a certainly good start, but um, I'm not sure that's not the only problems around here. Um, I still have that weird issue with it skipping 20 megahertz. Um, that's a bit tricky in itself, so I'm still trying to track that down. But this is not an easy thing to troubleshoot. Okay, one of the other issues I identified with this is that if I'm sitting at, say, uh, let's get the camera on it, 10 kilohertz, right? That's 10 kilohertz. So you've got 10, 20, 30, right? uh, 40 works. But 30 didn't work, 20 works, I think, because it's just stuck on that, and 10 works. Uh, 10 doesn't work, right? So 10 and 30 don't work. It will give the same reading. Now, if we look at the Fuchs camera, so that's on 10, that's on 20, that's on 20, that's on 30. That's on 40, which is correct. Now, if I do my little trick here with the freeze spray on that chip, which I've already found is causing the lock issue, I really cool that down a lot. Seems to be, be quite a bit. So that's still on 40. Now it's on 30. That's on 20. That's on 10. So that same chip is causing two of the faults I'm experiencing. So I say I've ordered some more of those, but it's going to take probably a couple of weeks to get them to turn up, if I'm lucky, um, which is a bit of a shame because I want to get this thing, you know, completed. But um, 
in the meantime I'll keep on looking for other faults. I know there is another fault present. Um, so that is actually two of the faults I've identified. Um, is that one chip that solves both of them, which is brilliant. Um, and there's only really one fault left then that I'm aware of at least at this stage. And that's the um, 20 megahertz offset. So if I uh, let's, let's stick this up on a frequency, see what does it. There we go. All right, so that's on 81 megahertz. Ignore the zero one. Oh, no, I'll round it off. Make it nice. Okay. Um, so that's 81 megahertz, right? I'm getting 101. So it's 20 megahertz sound. Um, that's the other fault I have to find. Sometimes it's not always that by that much. Sometimes it's bang on. It's it's fine. Um, if I go to 71. It also changes if you're going up or down. So if I'm going up, so if I start with a low frequency, which I know works, right? 21. That's fine. I'll do 31. It's fine. 41. 51. 61. 71. Broken. Right? But no, the 61 and 51 worked just now when I was going upwards. If I now go downwards, so 61 is 81. It worked last time, that doesn't. And 51 is correct. Right? But if I go up more, then it's, um, so if I'm going upwards, so 61 there, 61 there. Go to 71, so thoughts. That's now 91, even though it's set of 71. If I go back down to 61, 81. So, but if I go down to 51 again, then it. Oh, 51 now says 71. Right? And 41's come right. Okay, so there's a intermittent fault there. It depends which way this frequency is being stepped up or down. Let's go. If he's stepping up, it doesn't tend to show up as much. If he's stepping down, it shows up a lot more, um, or it stays faulted for longer, should I say? It's probably a more accurate description. But um, that's the other fault I've got to find. I don't know where that is yet. Um, I've done some diagnostics on the buses by measuring these ICs here. These are latching ICs, so um, it gets the data and latches the data on. You can see what data is coming out of the ICs. And um, it's got a test mode on here where it uh, alternates the bits. Um, ones and zeros, and you can actually see the um, data on those pins. That is correct. Um, so at least at this point, the bus is correct. Um, for that, the bus I checked anyway. But there's obviously some kind of fault somewhere else where it's stepping by 20 megahertz and not um, the right amount. So I'm guessing there's some kind of binary problem somewhere where um, it's probably on the edge of triggering and it's not quite flipping over properly. Um, that's what comes to mind. It's like the, there's the, um, you know, the second bit is it's not switching properly. Like it's always either 10 or 20 out if it does it. Usually 20, sometimes it's only 10 out. Um, so, and other times it's absolutely bang on, it's fine. And it seems to be around certain frequencies, so I'll need to try and figure out what the, what the binary codes are going between the devices which are controlling the actual frequencies, but unfortunately the manual doesn't say enough about that. Um, it says, you know, this is the controller board and that sort of stuff, but the, um, the actual information on how the controller changes the frequencies you know what binary codes it uses and so on um, there's nothing there so this got e these are EPROMs for calibration store calibration data main CPU which is fairly warm um, but yeah it's um, it's been a pain but I'm pleased because I've, I've made no progress in the past two days um, I was sort of been sitting and scratching my head trying to figure things out I'm, Trying to do it logically, I knew it's something around here, you know. I didn't quite know where um, for the POL lock because I, I couldn't actually fault it. I knew that the voltage coming out here at this point, which goes to the output side or the main VCR on the other side, um, that, that was wrong and that's fed from here. And all this seemed to be okay. It's had some work done here. Um, I can actually see that these two transistors here, um, unfortunately, the lighting's not very good now, it's got dark so the um. Let's get my torch out. That's you better. Right. Whew, probably a bit too good now. Right, so those two transistors there, right in the middle of the screen, 
Um, what numbers were they? Q16 and Q17, I think it was. Yeah. Um, they've been worked on. I can see they've been resoldered. They're really hot and they've got a flux around them and stuff like that. Um, at least it looks like they've been resoldered. They had, had flux there and it's been getting hot. But that part of the circuit is getting hot anyway. Um, and I gave that clean up and got the flux off and stuff in case that was causing any problems, but it didn't seem to help at all. And there was interesting marks on um, the casing actually, just in this area. As though something's blown out, like maybe you had the FM board in there or something. Or I'm actually guessing the casing that I took off wasn't from this unit because it's got witness marks, the components blowing up, but there's no witness marks on this board to say they've done it. Um, so I'll begin now. To give you an example, um, just above here the low rate FM option, which this doesn't have installed, and based on the components which are still in place, because some components to get left out for that or removed for that, they're still in there. So I don't think it's ever had that option either. Um, and it's not marked on the back as, as having it. Right here, there's a burn mark on the bottom of the, the cover. Um, there's also another one about here somewhere. Um, but there's no signs of any problems on this part of the circuit, so I think that cover's actually from a different unit. So I'm guessing someone's been doing some part swapping and stuff on these, so we'll make it a little bit harder, which I hate. But um, yeah, it's getting close. I mean, a lot of it's working. Um, if I stick it on like the monitoring channel of my radio there, 26.33, it works, it put out as a signal, the levels look about right, and it's got audio, right? So it's, it's really close, but it's just this frequency control stuff which is driving us one. But so now I found that chip there, which is U18, um, it's the MC1031P, so 101, yeah, 10131P, um, obsolete part. Lucky I found some, so anyway, um, I've ordered from from. Uh, I found it on eBay, AliExpress, and FutureLick. So I've ordered them from all three places because they're only you know a few dollars each. Um, and you know whichever one gets in first, we'll get in the radio. We'll get in the unit. So um, that's all that done. So at least that should cure two of the faults I'm experiencing. That will just leave me with that 20 megahertz shift thing, which I've got to figure out somehow.